Greetings, cyberdogs and citizens of the internet. This is Rendog coming at you from yet another episode of Let's Play Hearthstone. In the previous episode, we managed to have a pretty sweet ass battle with our priest deck, and even though I committed some serious noobish errors, we managed to come away from that battle victorious. In this uh, episode, guys, we're going to be cracking open another booster pack before heading back into ranked to play another match against a worthy opponent. Remember, our goal for this season is to get above level 20 and as it's almost halfway through the month and half halfway through the season we need to start getting cracking on winning now guys before we get going with today's episode i got some bad freaking news i've actually already recorded a hearthstone episode today but when i had finished the battle and i'd finished the recording i went to edit the video and i suddenly noticed Hang on, I actually did not press the record button. So, uh, unfortunately, I did not record the previous Hearthstone video. And for those of you who are curious, I played against a hunter and I lost. However, it, we both got down to uh, about five life each. It was really, really close. And the booster pack that I opened in the previous episode, guys, I managed to pick up a Holy Wrath 5 mana. Draw a card and deal damage equal to its cost. All right, guys, without further freaking ado, let's sling some freaking cards up in here. And before we get to any slinging, we've got a booster pack to open. So let's head straight back into the Plasma Record Spinner of Goodness. <laughs> Every time I come here, I just think that I'm listening to some sort of magical record or something. And we have another booster pack to open. Give us something sweet. Ooga booga da bam! <laughs> oh man, I'm going to do a little chant and that's going to give us something awesome. Alright, let's start with the top card for today, guys. It is a redemption for the Paladin. When one of your minion dies, return it to life with one health. That is pretty sweet. Would be awesome in a priest deck. <laughs> uh, number two, we have Mirror Entity for the Mage. It's a secret when your opponent plays a minion, summon a copy of it. Hey, that's pretty sweet. Next up, we have a Silver Moon Guardian. It's a 3-3 with Divine Shield for four mana. Not very good, not gonna lie. Next up, we have got a Shield Bearer and Nought 4 uh, with Taunt. So far, this has been a pretty dire booster pack. Let's hopefully get something so sweet in the last card. Let it be an epic kaplam! It is a rare, and it is an organized soul priest. Can you freaking handle it? We just, oh man, we spent so much freaking arcane dust to get two of these bad boys. We managed just to pick up a third one. I guess it's pretty awesome. We can disenchant it, get quite a lot of dust for it. So I'm pretty happy to uh, to have picked up another organized soul priest. Anyway, guys, that's the booster pack for today. Done. Absolutely so sweet. And uh, let's head over into our quest log. Have a look what we're trying to do right now. We've got another game to win as a druid or a hunter. Uh, we have nine more minions to cast that cost five or more, more to uh, unlock only the might and pick up 40 gold coins. And we can pick up three victories to pick up 40 gold coins. So I think the most realistic one is probably the three victories and only the mighty. That's what we're currently aiming for. And of course, we're trying to get up to level 19 to crack that level 20 barrier. Now guys, let's head straight into the play area and we're going to have a ranked game with our Cyberdog Priest deck. Uh, I have not made any changes and the reason for that is because I want to learn how to use this deck properly. Uh, before I make any changes, I know, guys, that I've been making some errors. A lot of you guys have been uh, <laughs> have been flaming me pretty hard in the comments. But, guys, remember that I am playing this game from scratch. I'm not actually reading any information on the internet or watching any videos about how to play Hearthstone. So, if I make a whole bunch of mistakes, just bear with me, man. And if you're looking for more competitive Hearthstone players, there are loads of them on YouTube. And maybe, maybe my videos aren't exactly the right Hearthstone videos for you. But for those of you guys who are enjoying my Hearthstone videos, thank you so much. And let's get straight into this game. We are playing Z Dendis, a druid. And our opening hand is looking pretty meh gotta say man we're gonna throw back death we're gonna throw back mind control both of these cards are only good later on in the game and i think we'll hold on to circle of healing it combos quite nicely with quite a few cards in our deck including our injured blade master and so on and so forth and i think we'll keep we'll keep holy smite also uh, just in case he drops some really early minions so i'm pretty happy to hang on to those two let's draw two more cards see what we pick up hello organized soul priest that's actually just turned um, our, our hero power into two damage. And guys, a lot of you guys pointed out in the previous Ready episode that I had an organized soul priest out, but I was not using my, my uh, hero power to deal damage. So thank you for letting me know about that. And I will never make that mistake again. And that is how we get better at freaking Hearthstone. Give me one second, man. I need a tasty sip of this beverage. Mm. 
All right, I'm ready to sling some freaking cards. Let's see what we're working with over here. Currently, our hand is looking pretty awesome. We're going to be able to go turn three, either Light Spawn or uh, Organized Soul Priest. For now, I think I'm probably just going to hold on to Holy Smite. We've got nothing really to do next turn. So if we really need to... Although, you know what? He could pump this 1-2 up. So you know what? I'm just going to get it off the battlefield. I mean, Holy Smite is only good in the first couple turns of the game anyway. As the minions get stronger and as soon as their butts get above 3, suddenly Holy Smite is like, meh. But uh, let's throw a rock at our opponent, man. Bam! <laughs> Alright, our opponent has used his hero power. He's come in for 1 damage. Sending it us back to us. We draw another light spawn. That is pretty awesome. Now, next turn, we're going to be able to either play Orcanize, Soul Priest or Light Spawn. I think I'm probably just going to gain some life here and pass the turn uh let's use our own hero power and pass the turn now the advantage of playing organized soul priest is that we suddenly turn our hero power into two damage the next turn which is probably worth doing but that organized soul priest has a freaking bullseye on it man <laughs> this thing is it basically just says kill me now because i'm gonna own your ace so maybe what we should do is lead with a light spawn which is a 5-5. It kind of gives our opponent an, a must-deal-with minion. And then the next turn, we could probably play the Organized Soul Priest. On the other hand, he hasn't played any minions. And he's literally just hero-powered twice. So that leads me to believe that he probably has some sweet jazz in his hand. And as we have two light spawns in our hand, I think at this stage... The best course of action is going to be to actually try and bait one of those uh, removal spells from his hand. So let's play our 5-5. Pass the turn. We're playing the Light Spawn in the knowledge that it's probably going to die by some means or other. And you know what? It's probably better to play Organized Soul Priest on turn 6 with 2 mana up. So we play the 3-5 the and then deal 2 damage to something. And there we go. You see that he does have some uh, pain in his hand. He just dealt a butt ton of damage to our light spawn. However, we know that we, can, we, we do have a circle of healing in hand that could come in handy right now. Or we could hero power uh, our light spawn. Give it plus two, plus two, essentially. And then play a mind vision. Hmm. Now, mind vision doesn't really do much uh, at this position, though. Um... Circle of Healing actually does the most here, but you know what? I kind of think that I want to maximize Circle of Healing more if I can. Huh. Huh, this is a tricky spot. My thinking is that I might just play another Light Spawn. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to heal my Light Spawn, get in for three, and play a Mind Vision. It's not... 100% maximizing my man, uh, the use of my mana. However, we did manage to pick up a Wrath, deal 3 damage to a minion, or 1 damage and draw a card. Well, we now know that um, our guy is going to die unless we heal him, because he, he obviously has a Wrath in hand. So why don't we actually play Circle of Healing now? That is going to take Light Spawn out of kill range. That now makes Wrath a dead card in his hand. He's now going to have to spend another 2 cards to deal with the Light Spawn. Now, next turn we probably want to play Soul Priest because we picked up a Temple Enforcer last turn. That means that this... Oh, it's give a friendly minion. Never mind. I thought this was give any minion plus three health. One of the biggest challenges that I find in this game is learning exactly what the cards do. That's like the biggest challenge for me in this game. Like, I keep forgetting the exact wording of the cards, right? And I just realized too that in the previous turn... No, 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 no. The previous turn was 100% correct. I thought I'd made a mistake there. But maybe what I should have done is... Um... No, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with what I did there. I'm pretty happy with what I did there in that turn. All right, we have picked up a pain card. Destroy a minion with three or less attack. I guess that's going straight into the butt of that Senjin Shield Master over there. That leaves us with two, uh, two mana, to, or three mana to spend, in fact. And I think, yeah, I, at this stage, I mean, we could just attack into it, but I'm not really happy with that. That does give us a chance to play the uh, Organized Soul Priest, though. Hmm. 
we know that he has a wrath in hand right so if we attack into that with the uh mm. with the the light spawn it's going to die to wrath so i think we're just going to pain the Sengen shield master out of the way get in for five and heal up the team I just passed the turn. I mean, we're just holding gas in our hand right now. I mean, he's, we, we are the ones that have a threat on the board. And our opponent is sitting there trying to deal with the threat. He just threw a taunt creature on the battlefield trying to deal with it. And now he's going to wait. He's going to spend his entire sixth turn to deal with our 5-5. Five five. So, you know what? I'm happy with that. I'm very, very happy with how that actually turned out in the end. Mm, that is what I'm talking about. Alright, so next up, we're on 6 mana, which we can now use uh, to play Orcanized Soul Priest and activate its ability. But, I don't think I'm going to be doing that. I, I kind of want to hold the Orcanized Soul Priest until he doesn't really have much left in his hand. Or until at least there is a minion on the battlefield for us to kill with the ability, right? That's my thinking. So what I think we should do... Although it is it is a 3-5. It is pretty beefy. I wonder. I'm just going to play another Light Spawn. I'm going to play another Light Spawn and, um, and pass the turn. We have a removal spell in hand. In fact, we have two removal spells in hand and a Thought Steal. So that's pretty sweet. Yeah, we'll pass the turn. I want to hold on to this Orcanized Soul Priest until we, are, we have the best opportune moment to play it. I want to be able to play it and take something out with my hero power to get maximum value. Alright, our opponent looks like he's going to spend a couple of cards to deal with our 5-5. And that is exactly what would have happened to our Orcanite Soul Priest. So, there we go. We, we basically dodged the death of our Soul Priest by playing that 5-5. So, I'm very happy with, with how that turned out. And we just picked up our late game card. So, that is excellent. Now, I think we now have the opening. To play Organized Soul Priest and Wrath that Bear. Huh. That's going to maximize the use of our mana. Get rid of the Iron Fur Grizzly. On the other hand, we could we could um, we could Wrath the Grizzly and play Thoughts uh, Thought Steel. We could also do that. That, fur, that, that basically gives us uh, a card extra, right? That gives us a little bit of card advantage there. But that's only 5 mana. That's actually not really maximizing our, our mana that efficiently. So, I think what I'm going to do is... I'm going to wrath the... Um, I'm going to wrath the, 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 the Grizzly. Deal 3 damage to the Grizzly, 1 damage to everything else. And I'm going to play Orcanized Soul Priest. Alright. Unfortunately, the Soul Priest is now at risk. But we are approaching 10 mana. Which means we have Mind Control up and coming. We do have a Temple Enforcer in our hand in case the Soul Priest takes damage and doesn't die this turn. We also have a death card in hand, a removal spell to take out any massive taunt creature that our opponent might play. And we also have a, also have a thought steal to refill our hand should things go horribly pear-shaped. Best case scenario, Organized Soul Priest survives and we actually get to pop something with two freaking damage. That's best case scenario. Let's fiddle with some jazz around here, man. Bam! Oh, I've already, I've already th threw a rock at him. Oh, we can reload it. Sweet. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> All right, Dendus, what you got for me there, bro? I mean, this is quite a tricky game right now. I, I'm not entirely sure what kind of druid deck he is playing, but it feels like he's playing quite... Um, Get behind me. Well, I was going to say quite a controlling oh, deck. Running. However, he did play uh, a 2-1 charger at some point. So, that wasn't, you know, that's not really a control card. But he has played, he has played a, 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 a bodyguard over here, a Booty Bay bodyguard, which is a perfect target for our Shadow Word death. So pretty happy about that. And I think that's exactly what's going to go down. Let's get rid of the Booty Bay bodyguard. Get in for three damage. We've got five mana left to spend. I don't think he's going to be playing any equipment. So we could play... I mean, we could two damage him with our Hero Power and play Thought Steel. Or play Thought Steel and play Acidic Swamp Ooze. Why don't we just run out of Thought Steel, see what we get? Oh my goodness. 
All right, Moonfire, deal one damage for zero mana. That's pretty sweet. And we got a, a Berserker. So that's a pretty sweet card to play at some point. And I think we just play the Swamp Ooze. It's going to have a, a longer term uh, damage over time effect than de just dealing two damage to our opponent. And this guy is already attacked. Let's pass the turn. Guys, I'm doing my best in this game to play as tight, as tightly and as, as well as I possibly can. So um, I'm pretty sure every single move so far has been fine. I mean, I did slow roll the Orcanized Soul Priest uh, for quite a few turns. I, I might have, I might have, hmm, it might have been better to play the Soul Priest a little bit earlier. But I'm pretty happy with how things are going so far. Alright, he's just made a massive 7-3 though. And we are one mana away from mind controlling that bad boy, so that is pretty sweet. Of course, I think we're totally fine. Okay, he's going to take out the Swamp Ooze with the Wrath. Oh, he didn't actually kill it. Sweet. <laughs> All right. Well, I think um, I think our move our moves here are pretty simple. We are going to deal two damage to the two two taunter. We're gonna take out the uh, seven three taunter with the swamp please. We'll just trade there. Three damage to the face, and then let's play the Guru Bashi Berserker. Whenever he takes damage, gain plus three attack, we could actually deal him two damage ourselves. <laughs> oh man, that's pretty sweet. And nothing left to do in our hand, so we'll pass the turn and attack. Yep. Attacked. This card actually seems like a fairly decent combo in this priest deck, come to think about it. With Organized Soul Priest in play, we can make this thing in basically into a four five. Four five? I suppose it's not that good. Alright, next turn, guys, is when things get messy. We just hit 10 mana. You know what that means. This 8-8 eight, eight Iron Bark Protector, which, by the way, it looks like a really awesome card. I love the art and everything. We are going to be mind controlling that bad boy. And getting in for 5 damage. And I gotta say, it looks like things are turning for the worst for my opponent. And uh, we have won the game. Thank you very much for that game. Well played, sir. And uh, I, I, I feel very good about that game, guys. I think I played that game pretty well, actually. Better than the previous games, uh, I'm pretty sure. And um, I don't think there was much moving out going on there. So we picked up 10 gold. That means if we can get that achievement of three victories, we will have enough gold for another arena draft, which is my current goal too. So excellent, excellent stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Let's Play Hearthstone with me, Ren Dog. If you did, you hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you hit that subscribe button. Remember, guys, I am uh, playing Hearthstone with you guys, and you guys are helping me become a better Hearthstone player. So leave all your hints and tips uh, in the comment section below. If you think that I made some wrong turns here and there, let me know in the comment section. I read all of them, guys. And uh, together, that we will become freaking Hearthstone pros. Cannot wait to see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Goodbye, my friends.